Hello everyone. So today I'm going to present you some of the work uh, from my PhD uh, thesis, which deals with the variation of cellulose nanocrystals and their use as picking emulsion emulsifiers to synthesize uh, different types of materials. So my PhD is run uh, in collaboration with two labs from Bordeaux in France. So the CRPP with Veronique Schmidt and the LCPO with Valérie Roguet. So first of all, uh, what are emulsions? So emulsions are uh, by definition a mix of at least two immiscible liquids and they have a broad range of application as you can see here. So usually when we talk about emulsion, we think about emulsion stabilized by a molecular scale surfactant. But in the case of picking emulsion, we are dealing with emulsion stabilized by solid particles because they have better stability, we chose to work with them, but also lower environmental impact and you can valorize the properties of the stabilizing particles. So these particles are very important to choose because uh, uh, their nature will uh, impact the nature of the emulsion. So if the particle is hydrophilic, which means it's uh, wetted by the, off, the uh, aqueous phase, it will lead to a direct emulsion, which is an oil droplet stabilized into an aqueous medium. And on the contrary, if the particle is hydrophobic, wetted by the organic phase, then you will have an inverted emulsion, which is a uh, water droplet stabilized into an, an organic medium. So in our case, we are working with cellulose nanocrystals, which are not spherical particles, but anisotropic particles with a rod shape. Uh, they are extracted, they can be extracted from wood, uh, which makes them a renewable resource. But uh, they are mainly hydrophilic by nature because they bear a lot of hydroxyl function on the surface. So to increase the hydrophobicity of this uh, CNC to uh, allow the stabilization of both direct and inverted emulsion, we chose to uh, use the esterification reaction to substitute the hydroxyl function by brominated function. So we can follow the substitution rate of these hydroxyls by br uh, brominated function over time. And uh, as the time increases, the substitution rate increases too. Uh, with the hydrophobicity, which uh, enables us to stabilize both direct or inverted emulsion. So the first type of uh, material we succeeded in synthesizing were solid foams. So regarding the process, uh, we uh, dispersed the CNC, the hydrophobic CNC into uh, an organic medium here, uh, which contains uh, the monomers, styrene and divinyl benzene, and we disperse water inside by mixing. So we can obtain here uh, the inverted emulsion, uh, the water droplet inside the organic medium. And uh, to obtain solid foam, we have to increase the water content above 64% to obtain a high internal phase emulsion, which is called hype. Uh, there, then we are able to polymerize the continuous phase containing the monomers, so solidify it. And by washing and drying, we can um, isolate a porous, a self-standing monolith, a porous solid, uh, getting rid of the water and all the residual um, monomers. So here you can see by SEM that the polyipe, polymerized ipe, is the exact image of the initial emulsion. So therefore, we can obtain emulsion templated porous materials. We checked the mechanical properties of this material because the presence of the CNC might have an impact on the mechanical properties because they have um, a young modulus of 150 gigapascal. So uh, by changing the diameter of the water droplet, we were able to measure different compressive modulus, but we thought that there was no impact on the, of the diameter of the droplet on this modulus. And this was predicted by the Gibson and Nashby model. So if we see this equation, uh, we try to change the water fraction. So increasing the water fraction to 85% and decreasing it to say 75%. And what we can see is that it fits the model except for uh, low, uh, low densities. So in the end, we obtained the power solids with an open porosity, which means that all our pores were connected with a tunable morphology in terms of cell size, but also of density, which fits uh, quite well a model description. The second subject we were interested in was the polymerization of the dispersed phase this time. So uh, similarly to previously, we dispersed this hydrophobic CNC into an organic medium, which was this time uh, neutral. So isopropylmerate and all uh, from uh, cosmetic industry. 
and uh, we disperse a polymerization system inside. So we obtained the inverted emulsion stabilized by the CNC and we were able to polymerize these beads. So we studied two types of uh, uh, radical polymerization. So the surface initiated uh, ATRP, taking advantage of the brominated function on the surface of the droplet. Uh, of the surface of the TNC and therefore from the surface of the droplet, we were able to grow this polymer from the surface of our object. And on the other hand, the free radical polymerization, making no link between the CNC and uh, the polymer. So for the first system, what we could see that we obtained uh, uh, within two hours, very good conversion of the monomer, uh, about 80%. Um, and we obtained this hollow bead uh, morphology. Uh, which uh, shows that we effectively gr have grown the polymer from the surface of our emulsion, leaving an inner void uh, inside the, the capsule. So, uh, however, this uh, reaction must be performed under a nitrogen atmosphere, which makes it quite tricky to perform. So we prefer to work with the free radical polymerization. And this time, uh, we obtain after polymerization uh, full beads, as you can see here by uh, uh, SEM, you can see a cut inside one of the be polymerized beads. It's uh, full with polymer. It's, so this reaction was easier to perform and we uh, access a similar conversion in only six hours. So it was uh, reasonable. We continued with the system to assess the mechanical properties of the object. So uh, to study the mechanical properties of these objects, we chose to work with an uniaxial compression. So we did put the sample inside the vial and we compressed it with a rheometer. And this piece here, um, you can see, uh, was pressing onto the beads, but uh, it has a porous uh, disc, which uh, enables the diffusion of uh, only the liquid phase. So here is the graph uh, we obtained with the stress in kilopascal uh, in function of the strain. So we imposed different deformation from 10 to 50%. And uh, so we did uh, the compression first uh, and studied the compression. You can see here a linear part, uh, which is the elastic domain. And uh, we studied also the relaxation. And what is important to see is that before and after compression, they, uh, the beads have a similar morphology. So they are still spherical. Uh, they are not broken and they're still build CNT at the surface. And we, what is interesting to notice in this graph is that we always come back to the 0% strain, which means that they recover the entire shape. So we have a system that is deformable up to 40% uh, that adopt a sponge-like behavior and has a modulus uh, around um, um, similar to soft tissues, about a, a dozen to 100 kilopascal, uh, which might be interesting for uh, bio-related applications. So uh, we were also able to vary the number of CNC layers above, uh, uh, around each droplet from five to 40. Uh, as we can see here by SEM, uh, the, more, um, uh, the more dense the coverage becomes, uh, the more aggregated the surface uh, is. So you can see that here is the surface is more dense. And uh, by measuring the compressive modulus, what we could see is that by increasing the number of CNC layers, we also increase the mechanical properties of these uh, latexes. Finally, the last uh, system we wanted to focus on were capsules with control release. So these capsules were obtained uh, by taking um, double emulsions as templates. To, so to make double emulsion, we just work with a two-step emulsification step. Uh, so the first emulsification step is to realize the direct simple emulsion. So an oil in water emulsion. So this time we use the hydrophilic CNC. So uh, with a low modification rate. So we disperse the uh, isopropylmeric state into the polymerization system with those uh, hydrophilic CNC. And we use this, um, uh, this first emulsion as dispersed phase for the second emulsification. Uh, taking this time hydrophobic CNC, and we obtained um, double emulsions, oil in water and oil. We were able to polymerize it. Uh, you can see here that we have a polymerized bead with the imprints inside of the inner droplets. And this system were show, showed to be efficient as encapsulation vessel for both hydrophobic and hydrophilic dyes, above 80% uh, for more than a month. So we have something that is tunable with a good encapsulation, efficiency, uh, which is transposable to other polymerization system.
So as a conclusion, we did obtain uh, three types of different materials, so solid films, uh, latex with different morphology depending on the initiation locus, and capsule with controlled leads. So I would like to thank you all for your attention, uh, thank the organizing committee, and if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me or contact me by email. I'd be glad to answer. Thank you.